Hey guys, Nick here again, back to talk about The Walking Dead, Season 7, Episode 10, called New Best Friends. And, uh, honestly, I really enjoyed this episode. I thought it was a lot of fun, it had a lot of really cool moments in it. So, uh, I, I got a lot of stuff that I wrote down that I wanted to talk about, so I'll just get right into it. Um, I'll try to go relatively in order. Um, the episode started with, um, another deal between, um... Ezekiel and some of his men and some of the saviors mm -hmm. and Honestly, I only bring this up because I just mm -hmm. Jerry was in that scene. And I just love Jerry. Everyone loves Jerry. I don't know anyone who doesn't I don't know how anyone could he's pretty great mm -hmm. But like at this point, I don't know what I like more mm -hmm. I don't know if I like Jerry more mm -hmm. or if I like Ezekiel's reactions to Jerry more <laughs> Cause like anytime Jerry says something, like I, I always find myself chuckling at it, and then I just hear Ezekiel go Jerry, and I, then I laugh even harder. <laughs> uh, I just, I, I love Ezekiel and I love Jerry. I just, I like the kingdom in general. Well, I like almost everyone in the kingdom. I do have one exception after this episode though, Richard. Uh, the guy who looks kind of like the governor. He's pretty much. Ezekiel's right-hand man. He's the one who's been trying to goad them into going to war with the saviors. Well, he uh, decided to hatch his own plan to try and start a war by leading the saviors to Carol. And Richard made the mistake of sharing this plan with Daryl. And as soon as I realized what Richard's plan was, I'm like... Oh, Daryl is about to kill you. And I, I wouldn't have blamed him. Daryl didn't kill him, but I wouldn't have blamed him. I mean, and, and he told him as much. Like, anything happens to Carol. She gets hurt. She gets a cold. I'll kill you. <laughs> uh, that sounded more like Rick, but that's pretty much what Daryl said. Yeah, I'm just like, that is not cool, Richard. I mean... He was going to sacrifice one for the many, but I mean, the one is Carol, and that that's not cool. And he's going to have to really work hard to earn some forgiveness for that little move, because that was not cool at all. But, uh, moving on to the where we were left hanging after last week's episode, Rick and his group were... Surrounded by a new group of, like, steampunk-looking trash people. It's really the best way I can describe them. And we get to see them this week, and honestly, I think they're they're very unique. I think they're kind of interesting. They're not really like any group they've ever encountered, but they're pretty shady. Like, I'm, I'm not sure if I trust any of them. The leader uh, <laughs> made a whole video talking about it, who I thought was the leader guy named Brian. First of all, it turns out his name is pronounced Brian, because it's Brian with an O, and he's not even the leader. He w he had one line in the whole episode. The real leader was this tall, skinny chick with a weird haircut named Jadis. And I have mixed feelings about her, because on the one hand, she is cool. Like, she looks really cool. And... If she were an, a an asset, if she was actually on Rick's side, that would be a very good thing. Here's the problem. I don't trust her. She's very, very untrustworthy. I just, she, just like the group. The whole group is shady, and her in particular. And, I mean, Rick was all smiles dealing with them, but my smile definitely would have been gone by the time she pushed Rick off the, the trash mountain, at, to quote Chris Hardwick. Pushed, pushed him off the trash mountain into the the pit with the weird spiky walker that we all saw in the in the previews. His name, as it turns out, because he's he was so cool they had to give him a name. His name is Winslow. And honestly, Winslow is hands down the coolest, most amazing, most unforgettable walker in Walking Dead history. Like it was so cool 
Like, it's a zombie covered in spikes. And Rick was thrown into a pit with him and had to figure out how to kill it. And you know what? I don't think I could have done it. Rick could barely do it. He, he tried whacking it with a keyboard. Because, obviously. And, like, just to hold it back, he had to stick his hand, like, through the, the like, his forehead, and there was a spike on it, so Rick literally had to put a spike through his own hand to keep himself from getting bit or otherwise impaled in a more fatal area. But, you know, Rick, he is the man, so obviously he figured out a way to do it. Figured out a way to take him out. I mean, w Winslow is just... Just so cool. Just just so unique and inventive. I loved it. I really did. Just so awesome. But, um... What really made this episode extra great for me was all the small moments. All the little quieter moments between the characters. Like, uh... Rick grabbing a junkyard cat for Michonne because she had one that she got back in season three when Rick, Carl, and Michonne went back to Rick's hometown and found Morgan there and he was completely crazy and even tried to kill them. And Michonne found a, a cat sculpture at a restaurant that Carl wanted to go to just so he could have a picture of Lori for Judith. And Michonne gets the picture and grabs the cat and she's like couldn't leave this behind it was too gorgeous and obviously that that cat got left behind at the prison when the governor invaded so i thought it was really nice to see rick get her uh, another one and some have said an anniversary present because this was episode 10 this was episode 10 of season 7 they first got together in episode 10 of last season so some people were like it's an anniversary present like, okay, fair enough. And then, uh, there was, as it turns out, this group, Jadis' group, did have Gabriel, but he was not hurt. And, and we finally get the explanation as to what happened, as to why he took all the stuff, who that was in the back seat, how he knew where to guide Rick and Aaron, or, well, everybody, but he knew that Rick and Aaron had been to that boat before. Like, it it all makes sense. I knew there was a good reason. I knew it would be explained, and I, I knew Gabriel didn't betray the group. I never doubted him for a second, and neither did Rick. So, just saying that they're, they're really good friends now, that was a nice moment for me. And then there is uh, the moment where Daryl was petting Shiva. Like, I know that sounds kind of weird, but, you know, Daryl petting a tiger. Why not? <laughs> like, Daryl isn't in the comics, and some people thought that Shiva wouldn't even make it to the show because it would be kind of hard to have a tiger in a real-life world. It would either have to be CGI, or, they're all, or the actors are really going to have to trust <laughs> that the tiger's not going to kill them. But yeah, just it was nice seeing these two things that probably shouldn't be. Like, Daryl shouldn't be in the comics. That Shiva probably shouldn't be on the show. Nice to see him come together. I don't know, that, that, was, that was just me, I guess. And then, finally, was the Carol and Daryl reunion. That, for me, was the best part of the episode. Like, Daryl's voice cracked when he asked, Why'd you go? I'm like, oh my god, Norman Reedus, you're gonna, you're gonna destroy me. I don't know what it is. Like, everyone on that show, I've seen pretty much the entire main cast crying. But for whatever reason, Daryl crying is the, is just the one where it's like, well, if you start crying, I'm gonna start crying. <laughs> and just, it was just nice to finally see them back together because I, I counted how long it had been. Since they had last been together. It's been 12 episodes since Daryl and Carol last interacted with each other. 12 episodes. Um, 
finally glad to see them reunited. But it was the moment during the during the reunion. She asked if um she asked what was going on back home, if everyone was okay. And obviously things aren't okay. But Daryl was like, everything's fine. Everyone's okay. We took care of them. Again, that sounds more like Rick. I think I'll just stop trying to impersonate Daryl. But, um, yeah, at first I was like, don't lie to her, Daryl. But I thought about it. I'm like, you know what? She probably needed the lie. And then I got to thinking, there's sort of a parallel there with what Ezekiel said in the second episode about how, like when Carol confronted him about how his whole community just seems like a joke. He's like, people need the contradiction. It, the lie is good for them. And that's pretty much what Daryl did. The lie was good for Carol. Like, sometimes honesty is not the best policy. Like, Carol still wanted to be alone, and Daryl had told her everything that had happened. She would have gone right back into the, right back into the fight. And it's not what she wanted, so... So, yeah, Daryl was really just respecting her wishes. Now, uh... There was one problem I had with the episode. It was Rosita. I mean, the first half of the season, I kind of liked that she was starting to get more screen time. Like, she was starting to become even more of a main character. Like, in the comics, she is barely there. She was a little more than a background character. But on the show, like, she now has more... She's pretty much had more screen time than Eugene at this point. Even though Eugene is a much more important character in the comics than her. So yeah, I, I was enjoying seeing her get some more screen time, but... My god, this episode and the one before, she's just gotten really, really catty. Really just... She's turning into a real bee. Honestly, she really is. <laughs> and no, I can't swear because my mom watches these videos, but you know what I meant. Like, she just... Like, I get it, okay? She had to watch Abraham die, just like everybody. And... I mean, they had broken up, but I could tell she was still in love with them. And... Of course, she had a burning hatred for Negan. And I, I'm sure that the fact that... Her assassination attempt led to Olivia getting killed. I'm sure that's probably weighing on her mind, at least a little bit. But... Just to me, that doesn't really give her the right to be as obnoxious as she has been lately. Like, I hope she reels it in. Like, I'm not saying, oh my god, Rosita, just die already. I'm just like, oh my god, Rosita, shut up already. That's all I want. I just want Rosita to shut up. To just get back to the way she was and stop with whatever this is. I mean, she's worse than Sasha was after she lost Bob and Tyrese. Particularly Tyrese, because at least when Bob died, she had Tyrese there to comfort her. But yeah, I mean... And even in the last episode, Sasha was trying to comfort Rosita, and Rosita's like, We both had sex with the same man, that doesn't make us friends. And I'm like, Rawr. I guess she was not the biggest cat in here. <laughs> but yeah, just... I, I wonder if Sasha looked at her in that moment and was just like, God, was I this bad? No, Sasha, you weren't. Yeah, but, um, overall, despite my frustration with Rosita, I'm a, I really enjoyed the episode. Overall, I'd probably give it a 9 out of 10. Just because it had so many good smaller moments, and a lot of good big moments, like Winslow. Winslow's truly unforgettable. <laughs> and this new group is cool, but I don't trust them. I just don't. I can't. Sorry if I have a hard time trusting someone who throws the main character, who also happens to be my favorite character, into a pit with uh, a zombie that looks like something out of Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. Just kind of hard for me to trust that person right away. So yeah, um, that's all I want to say about the episode. 9 out of 10 is my rating for it. And uh, I'll, uh, I'll see you next week.